I'm here to have a conversation with you about aquaponics. This is not a lecture series. This is more of a show and tell and is hands on, my hand, and hopefully at your end, your hand, for you to learn the basics of aquaponics. Our intention is to teach you where it came from, who started it, how much progress you been made, who are the leaders in this thing, what systems work, and then to show you some possibilities of what you can do. We'll start off with an aquarium in the house and then having a garden outside, and we'll go from there. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this journey. Aquaponics is a fine art of using the fish waste water to fertilize the plants, letting the plants clean up the water and recirculating it back to the fish tank nice and clean. This is a basic aquarium setup. 55 gallons, all you have to have is anywhere from 6 to 10 fish in it and you've got what you need to do your garden. Your garden can be right outside there on the tables out in the sunlight. One of the things I really like is I can come from inside the studio, or inside my townhouse or my condo, step out on the lanai, and here's my little cinder bed with my aquarium fish water coming into it. It's going to fill up to here, hit this level, it's going to go down, that's going to set up a siphon, the water's going to go past, and it's going to fertigate all my plants. Fertigate, fertilized irrigation. So, like hydroponic, but it's organic. Big difference. And you can certainly tell it in the taste. Okay. I think one of the neatest things in aquaponics is that something called barrel ponics, or aquaponics in a barrel. A fellow named Travis Huey came up with this in about 2005. He gifted it to the world. If you're just making it for yourself, he's happy to share his plans with you for free up on the internet. Basically, he has a 55 gallon drum on the bottom. That is your fish in there, that's your aquarium. He pumps the water up here to the top, comes up to the top, running all the time. Up here, you have your cinder bed or your biofilter, and you have a siphon. This is kind of a neat thing. This is the Australian Bell siphon. The water goes up, flushes, goes down. We're going to teach you all about that. That goes in there. The water's going to fill up to about this level, then it's going to flush. It's going to come out the bottom, and it's going to come through. And what you're going to see, as things grow hydroponically without any soil and you also see that we have cinder beds here two 25 gallon cinder beds growing rooted crops or we can go with the leafy lettuce our choice but it's something anybody can do if you got access to a couple of barrels you'll enjoy this this is kind of a cute little system we designed right here at Olamana Garden it consists of three trays Set up on top of a luau table. Table 30 by 60, 30 inches by 6 feet long. Three little trays from Home Depot filled full of cinder. The water's flowing up here constantly. Where does the water come from? It comes from the fish tank. Down here we have a 110 gallon fish tank. Fish are swimming around in it. Water gets pumped up there. The water goes through there. This is your siphon. When the water fills up here, hits this level, overflows, comes down, and then we have what? Our aquaponic bed, right? With all the plants growing like that. So, come through here. The last one is our Azola. This is where we grow our own fish food, and I can feed my fish by doing that. Doesn't get much simpler than that, folks, and it really works. If you're talking aquaponics and you're talking sustainability, well, you got to get rid of the food. We mentioned that. The other thing is energy. Solar really plays in. This is a small little system that you can put together for a couple of hundred dollars. And the solar into here is 80 watts. We'll run one of these systems. Every now and then we have somebody say, well, you know what? I just don't want a whole bunch of ugly black plastic tanks in my backyard. Well, it doesn't have to be that way. You can have all the nature you want. And you can have it with that as scenic as possible. So this can be your fish pond. This pond is five feet deep. That brings up a healthy bounty of fish for us every year. In this course, we're going to show you, you're not stuck with doing an aquarium or a plastic tank. You can be in a very natural pond setting. You can be grazing beautiful koi fish. We've got some guys in here two and a half, three feet long. 
We don't eat these guys, totally ornamental. But you know what? My plants don't care. So we're going to show you many different ways to do this. Now you saw the fish in the aquarium. You see a fish in a tank. But the best way to actually see a fish is in your landing net. These are some of our nice guys here. I'd like to show you here is how we get dinner. This is our dinner. We can catch them. You can walk over here at any time. And just come up with a whole pot full of them. So these are great tasting guys. And we'll show you how to catch them. We'll show you how to raise them. And the best part, we're going to show you how to cook them. So I'll tell you what, these little beauties just cook, cook up very well. This is a 1,200-gallon tank. What we want to show you is every time we move water, that we aerated. We're going to show you several different methods. Now this tank is 1,200 gallons, and we have over a thousand fish. And it's not too hard to come up with a net full of them. Okay, this is a tea maker. We're going to show you how we don't just limit ourselves to the fish food, but we actually make tea in these 55 gallons. We make it every day. And it's a simple thing. We're going to show you how to take a stack of worm castings, put it in the bucket, pop it around here, run it for 24 hours, and when you top off your system, we're going to teach you how to use worm tea. It's a miracle stuff. This is the kind of spray action we get out of the water coming down the hill, dumping into our siphon tank. I think you'll be quite surprised at how much aeration. We keep our air up at 7 to 7.2 parts per million by this method. We run very little pressurized air in our system. This is the clear water in the bottom of our sump tank. And from this, you can see just how clear the water is. When we start talking about sustainability in aquaponics, how sustainable can you be if you have to go to the store and buy your fish food? So we're going to show you how to raise azolla and other crops like duckweed so you grow your own food to feed it. Not only do we feed our fish this in aquaponics, but here on the farm, our goats, our chickens, our pigs. We're going to show you duckweed. We're going to show you many different ways of doing it, of growing your own food. Some of the things we're going to share with you is that we grow from everything from sweet potato, a little ornamental flowers, keeps the bugs confused. But the most important thing is we have in our beds is we raise worms. Here are my worms. These are Indian blue worms. We're going to show you how to grow them and they keep everything smelling sweet. There's a rumor in aquaponics that about the only thing you can grow is lettuce. But we're here to tell you, you can grow yourself a forest of kalo. This stuff is fantastic, extremely nutritious, and a favorite around the Pacific Islands. You always want to think about your herbs. You get your herbs, you get your chives, it's really nice. We're going to go over and show you some mint right after this. If you're into the cooking arts, aquaponics offers you a special treat. You can grow so many of your herbs. One of my favorites here is I like a cool drink in the summertime. So I grow four different kinds of mint in one 4x4 four four foot garden. I've got spearmint, peppermint, orange mint, and my all-time favorite, chocolate mint. Life is good. Sweet potatoes are all-time favorite all over the world. We grow them not only just for the potato, but also for the leaves. We use it in many, many dishes. We're particularly proud of this, tapioca. This is a staple crop when you go down to Tonga and Fiji and the Pacific Islands. Big starch eating plant. You eat the roots of it. This plant, towering over five, six foot tall, is only five months old and it's already bearing seeds. This is some kale. Stuff grows big and strong in here. What we're most proud of in our ebb and flow system and using the cinder beds to filter the fish water, it gives us a special treat. We get to grow things like asparagus. It takes two years to get your first crop, and after that, you go eight to 10 years. This is some great eating. 
Water hyacinths just add a little beauty to any water garden. You can't eat them, but they sure clean up the water and they add a little beauty to the garden. Well, if you're going to be in Hawaii, one thing you got to do is grow a little bit of pineapple. It's a two year crop, folks, but this pineapple is only about four and a half, maybe five months old. And it'll be eaten here maybe in another month. It's doing all right. This is Chayote squash. The real particularly interesting thing on this is all of this is from one vine. Just one plant. Right now we got about a count of 58 fruit up here. Now very often you have people bragging about mine is bigger than yours or mine grows faster. Well I want to put a claim out that ours is growing more fertile. This is sprouting right on the vine. And you can see many more in the background doing very similar. I thought you might get a kick out of this. White ginger. We're multimedia. You got sound. You can hear me. You got visual. But you know what? You can't smell it. And it is beautiful. Here we teach brand new technology. It's only 2,000 years old. Pretty much developed by the Romans. And we just unearthed some ancient scribe scrolls and we found out that if you take two inch by two inch by two inch block and you stamp it out, they're soil blockers you buy on the internet. You can learn to stamp these out and what do you do? You take this little block and it's sitting here in your hand like this. When it sprouts up, the roots will not jump out into the air. We take this and we simply put it inside of a net pot. The net pot then, once this is a little bit grown, and say about this size, now it's ready to go out in the field. The roots are just wanting to start to come out. We take this and we go drop it inside one of our float beds. And then, wow, the roots are going to shoot out. And this will be harvested in about two weeks from this stage right here. Anybody who studies aquaculture or aquaponics is sooner or later have to have to come to grips with chemistry. It's not too bad. You learn to do pH tests. You learn to do nitrate tests. And they're all very similar. You have an instruction book that tells you how much chemicals to put in a little test tube, put a sample of water. You learn to put it in here. You learn to read the chart and to tell good from bad. Basic stuff, but you need to know it. So we're not going to drown in it, but we're going to certainly cover the basics. The other one, aquaculture and aquaponics, is a DO meter. That's dissolved oxygen. And you're going to learn what's good and when you're getting in trouble. Without this little magic wand, it's just a guessing game, folks. This we don't live without. What I'd like to share with you and teach you in this course is how to build your own siphon. This is a practice one. It's a five-gallon bucket. We're going to have you go get a bucket, drill a hole in it. You're going to get some PVC pipe, and you're going to make it up like this. And you're going to discover the magic, how this buck, bucket can control a larger garden over on the side and allow you to drain that garden all the way to the bottom. The secret here is, the water will be coming in from the bottom. When it fills up to here, it hits this point, it will overflow and come out three to four times faster than it's coming in. It will keep coming out until this pipe here is an airflow. This is the air release. And when the water gets to the bottom of that pipe, then it will break the siphon, you'll hear a gurgle, the water will stop coming out of here, and it will continue filling back up. So this will take 10 minutes to fill up, and then it'll go down in two minutes, controlling a garden much larger than this bucket. The second siphon we're gonna show you is the Australian Bell Siphon. This is neat, it could be used in a bucket. You would remove all this white piping. You'd have one pipe coming up on the inside about that tall. This would sit over the top of that pipe. When the water came up in this bucket and overflowed into the stand pipe, it would set up a suction and it would suck out the air on the top third of half of this siphon. When it sucks out the air, that will trigger a siphon. It will then flush like flushing a toilet. The water will rush out. When it rushes out, it'll rush out until it gets down to here. And this is your air brake. This tube goes all the way up to the center inside here. And so we're going to teach you this. We're going to give you a little diagram of it. We're going to have you go build it. And you're going to have you practice on a little five-gallon bucket. Once you get this down, you're set. 
I believe the best way to learn aquaponics is build yourself a small system and get started. But it's kind of a neat thing if you have an idea of where you might end up. So what I want to show you now is some pictures that I've taken around the, the Big Island and on Oahu here in Hawaii of different systems to give you a little concept of what you might want to do. Okay? And I'm going to give you some links. And in this course, we're going to send you to people like Will Allen at Growing Power and over to the Virgin Island University with Dr. Ricosi. We want to show you what the other people are doing. So anyway, hold on and we'll give you a little tour around the island. We'll start a little tour off at uh, David Stark's place up in Waimea. He's taken a suburban backyard and made it into a food forest. He's just doing great with it. He's also been very innovative in his methods of doing vacuum seed boxes, the way to drill out your float beds. Just a genius. And this is a simple system anybody could build. It's wonderful. This is uh, YB's place. This is um, uh, started off as being a 10-man plan from Friendly Aquaponics. Uh, a lot of it is very similar. It's taken right off the plants, and then he's modified things. Welcome to Deborah and Rick's Fun Ponics. This is a home in Lanikipe, up on the side of a hill. Difficult piece of property, and they've done something wonderful. They've cantilevered off their aquaponics system and have it cascading down the side of the mountain. This is Alexis and Chris Smith of Coast View Aquaponics overlooking the Kona Airport. This is Dragon Eyes Venture. This is just a wonderful place. I call it a little Disneyland. They milled all the wood that you see here and they built everything up. The bottom foot is cinder of the bottom. Then they put in a food grade lining and then they put in the plywood on the top, drilled the holes. It's just fantastic. Great production out of it. Wonderful Puna, Big Island environment. You get down there. This is their center beds. It's a flushing system. It's just great. You got to go see it if you can go on the Big Island. Well, what we tried to show you in this little brief introduction is some of the things we're going to cover in this course. You're going to have a lot of diagrams. You're going to have a lot of scientific information. We're going to have a little bit of chemistry. But we want to kind of keep it light. We want to encourage you to get out there and get it going. But the most important thing is for you to have a basic understanding of the basic principles on it. Doing the siphons, the ebb and the flow, uh, Dr. Ricosi's method at Virgin Island Institute of doing solid removal. These things, and once you know them, you have this little introductory. And then I want to encourage you to go out and visit any aquaponic farms that are in your area. You'll learn so much by talking to the very people. If you can't get out and visit them, I'm going to encourage you to Google them. Get up there and Google aquaponics, put in the name of your state, your country, and find out what's going on around you. Email these people. You'll be quite surprised at how much they're willing to share. Well, anyway, folks, this is your introduction. Now we're going to get down to business in the course. Thank you for listening.